Hello, friends. It's Chop handing the reins of everything over to people who could not give a shit if your food was poisoned or if it was trash. I mean, like, Tucker literally, you know, his dad married into a fucking frozen dinner at Dynasty. <laughs> right. They, invented, they yeah. invented the TV dinner. Yeah. They, they invented, invented it. Like, you're telling oh. me that 1955, there wouldn't be a return guy looking at that shit? <laughs> Yeah, the Swanson family has probably taken out more sperm than nuclear bombs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably this is Tucker's way shit. of giving back, giving back yeah. to the community. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 like, I mean, you know, honestly, at the end of the day, for this current thing, uh, over the last 40, 50 years, who knows who's more responsible? I know who started it. It was Jimmy Carter. Yeah. You <laughs> kind of have to give that one up. It kind of was him. And for the worst reason, he thought he was helping. He was so excited. He thought he was doing such a great job. God, well, yeah, get, no. Well, let's get into the specifics of, like, sort of what, what, what's a good, like, uh, entry point in, into the Man Clan, which was this, like, you know, uh, Tucker Carlson short film about the end of masculinity and, like, you know, that's been sort of presented as the, uh, the testicle tanning uh, documentary, which it certainly is. But essentially... Uh, what, what what this little short film does is 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 articulate the question, uh, you know, or, or the, the the statement. My, my one of my fam- one of my favorite literary quotes from the Dog of the South: "We're weaker than our fathers, Dupree. We don't even look like them." And uh, the documentary starts out. It's just like essentially tr- s- s- trying to answer the question, you know, why has uh, like American male sperm uh, counts and viability gone plummeted? You know, why why are men less manly than they used to be? And it's interesting because, like, he interviews Robert F. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and like, um, you know, scientists who, uh, a, a, like, a food scientist who has been censored by the FDA. And the answer to the question is, why do we not look like our fathers anymore? Is that for the last forty or fifty years, as Matt and Felix are talking about, we have been systematically poisoned by big agriculture and pharmaceutical companies, which is true. Yes. But the problem is. Then it gets into this fucking like the, 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 this circus of, of nonsense about like, you know, uh, like eating disorders and working out and all this shit. And instead of like, oh, well, it's it's the regulatory capture or there, there could be like solutions to this. It's like, OK, how do you how do you combat this? Will you foment a hatred of women, minorities, Marxists? Like, I mean, like what starts out is essentially like health and nutrition and masculine mentoring just immediately becomes standard right wing, you know, like bigotries and directing the hatred against, you know, a loss of control over one's own life to Marxists, feminists. So, like, how, do, how does that process work? Like, how, do, how did the, like, the pickup artist community or what was essentially advice on health and dating for young men, m- like, mutate into, like, an obsession with the Frankfurt School and cultural Marxism? Yeah, I mean, this is a really interesting phenomenon. When I, I started my PhD about the manosphere, but it kind of ended up being about the alt-right purely because that's what bar one site that I was studying all devolved into. And it was a really interesting process. I think it was partly to do with social media. When I first started kind of researching these places, there were a lot of isolated forums and blogs and things like that which didn't actually have much connection with one another. But as they kind of started networking over social media, they began borrowing each other's language um, and finding the new handy phrases for kind of, I guess, expressing your resentment of women, um, but also your resentment of what you felt was kind of a subversion of the natural hierarchy in general, which didn't just have to be about women. That could be about LGBT, it could be about um, civil rights, And so, you know, these places started borrowing language from each other, swapping ideas. Um, And that was just the trend that things were going, I think, especially with Trump's kind of election campaign that got lots of them going kind of very in the MAGA direction. Um, And you kind of notice a difference in what becomes the fantasies on these places as well. You know, it was a really common fantasy in lots of anti-feminist spaces that there will be this day of reckoning. There will be a day when... You know, women who thought they, you know, had it all and could be independent and go out and get a career will realize that they need us, you know, civilization or collapse, zombie apocalypse, whatever. And one thing I noticed was those fantasies became gradually more uh, just over the course of the time I was studying these places from 2012 to 2016. 
it stopped being kind of zombie apocalypse and started being like immigrant hordes, the refugee hordes kind of thing coming through the gate. And then women will realize they need the strength of white men. So I think it's about a preoccupation with subversion. You're essentially kind of teaching people to kind of know, keep an eye out for subversion wherever you might see it, subversion of natural uh, hierarchies, but also I think a preoccupation with domination. Like lots of these places start out as, you know, ways for guys not to feel so bad about getting rejected, um, but they turn into a preoccupation with domination, uh, fear of being dominated by women, but um, obviously if you're kind of feeding an anxiety like that, it won't just stay with women. But I was interested in the Tucker Carlson documentary because that was what what I thought it would do. It would start with resentment for women and kind of move towards a more uh, coherent right-wing ideology. But instead it kind of started with, you know, you're fat and depressed and feeling poisoned, which I think is, I guess, what a lot of more recent Manosphere influencers seem to be trying. It's funny that they had to pick JFK, you know, because he was like so <laughs> riddled with kind of like disease and like physical we weakness. And then he got obsessed with this like, World War II veteran who was doing this uh, La Sierra High School PE program, which essentially like put people in color categories and like isolated like low performing students <laughs> to kind of make sure that they, uh, you know, were more open to instruction. But it is I, like going back to the kind of idea that like the empire's reach was starting to decay. Right. And like the idea that the face of the empire was actually or like what what accomplished the American empire was a bunch of kind of effete out of shape men and the cruelty of these effete men was what actually allowed a lot of these uh, a lot of these structures to be built or whatever but the problem is that like now the idea is like well well no but those effete men at least they fucking hated gay people at least they like knew like where to put like how to put women in their place or whatever <laughs> and so you have this kind of like dichotomy of like having to rewrite history of like oh yeah yeah mm. actually you don't know it was a bunch of strong men that we used to have instead of like the reality of things and they have to fucking fall back on JFK because it's easy because he was killed. So he was killed because he wanted us to be strong. Obviously, you know, that's like in the documentary, they, they do basically say that, that he wanted kids to be strong again. And then, so they fucking killed him. Yeah. The movie implies that he was killed because he wanted PE to come back to American schools. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. a new one. <laughs> I like well, that. they didn't start I mean, the presidential fitness test until after Kevin, after JFK came out. I mean, I remember, wasn't it the Kennedy fitness test? I remember cursing him. The president, he's the one who established that, right? Yeah, he put together a council and the guy, the World War II veteran I mentioned, uh, La Prada, um, he was on that kind of council and he was the guy who was running this California school. So it's like a fucking, you know, like liberal state, supposedly school of like these strong, you know, young men or whatever. Um, and the idea was basically just like we, we had to fucking fight World War Two. And now you fucking pussies are just enjoying uh, the spoils. And you only basically go to, you know, like to war if you're if you're after after like Vietnam, certainly like if you're kind of um, if you want to, you know, but we used to all have to do this. And that's that's bullshit. You know, I remember cheating at the sit and reach for that fucking thing. I hate it. <laughs> well, that's probably yeah, why I became a soy boy. So, something that uh, Annie said that I thought was interesting was about the uh, the fear, like not the fear, but like the the wish that like, yeah, civilization collapses and then women will have to run back to us. And then that morphs into, oh, third world hordes are going to come in and actually we're going to save them from like, I remember a late 2000s, early 2010s Internet thing was Eurabia. That was a huge mm. thing oh, yeah. of you know, Muslims taking over the EU and sort of similar to the self-improvement and seed oils and soy and, and, and that type of thing. The interesting thing to me about all this is that it takes these things that are kind of like always like things that men have always done in a modern context that range from like normal to like kind of embarrassing, but everyone does it like, okay, every man has had on some level, like some type of ridiculous fantasy where they like, prevent a terrorist attack or a mass <laughs> shooting yes. and like the girls at school see them or and like every man every man has like you know wanted to improve their body or felt shitty about it or felt mm -hmm. fat or weak or too small or too big or, or anything like that and gone on yeah very a lot of them have gone on like a very singular quest of self-improvement that you know either you'll learn things about yourself or 
sometimes in, in in bad cases that will become the only thing you care about but all these things that previously existed they morphed when everyone became more insane when in the uh, 2010s everyone became exposed to each other's every thought all the time mm. when everyone got shuffled into the same spaces same three places online it did obviously there are other factors but I think that contributed to making people fucking insane. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there is like much of of a recognition that really there's a lot of loneliness out there, and that like the it, mm -hmm. people do talk about like put down your fucking phone, but it's pretty rich coming from people who are basically only appearing to you through your phone, right? Yeah, so this is like, the most yeah, internet shit in the world. Yeah, it's like put down your phone and stop uh, watching my YouTube. Fuck. Wait, no. Uh, actually it's the Marxist. Like, you know, you have to find something because we're all caught in the same fucking thing. At the end of the day, we're just fighting for what is the kind of cultural facade that will, that will oversee, uh, the, the decline of the empire. So who is the infiltrator as opposed to like, what is the aesthetic facade that I would like to see on this shitty decaying empire? Um, you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, I don't know. It's kind of like, we're all just like yelling at each other in a cul-de-sac basically. Well, I mean, like, I mean, and back to the the the, the end of Men, the, the Tucker Carlson documentary, and then I want to get into some of the specific uh, mano fluencers that uh, you guys have studied. Mm. But yeah, like back to Matt's original point that this is a product of like a kind of that everyone has caught into the idea that like politics is a dead end for changing our society. That essentially, like, it's locked in. The, the algorithm, the market is in control, and it only the wheel only turns in one direction. So, the the point of this movie is that like, yeah, like we're being poisoned. We're fatter, we're more depressed, we're less, he we're less healthy, we're less connected to other human beings. And of course, because it's, you know, Tucker Carlson doing this, it's not like um, he's going to advocate for, I don't know, universal health care as part of an overall, like, uh, wellness program or mental health or any kind of, like, real regulation of our food supply. So all you're left with are individual choices to purify not just one's body, but one's mind and social circle. So it just becomes, yeah, like, you've got to cut out uh, the, the the evil things like seed oils, and then you have to cut out feminine the influence of the mother. But what all what, what this all boils down to is like what these guys talk about. It's a return to what they regard as like a natural order of things, which is you know like of course this inherently fascist idea that like you know men are, are to be dominant over women, that you know whites are to be dominant over other, and that like the in introduction of feminine influences or the influences of. Uh, se different sexualities or gender identities or immigrant populations are like introducing, uh, you know, uh, Teflon into your body. And it's making it's making our, uh, not just your body sick, but like our society sick because we've we've rejected this sort of biological, natural order and hierarchy. Did you guys talk about that? Yeah, I mean, I think the idea of having rejected the the natural hierarchy is a really curious one. And I think it does go a little part of the way to explaining why it's such a why it's such a predictable trajectory that most of these sites and most of these influences will go on. You kind of mentioned it earlier where it kind of starts being about picking up chicks and in the end you're kind of a Christian nationalist who, you know, says you need to have, you know, a have a virginal trad wife and go and live on a, a farm Those somewhere. Both are run counter to each other. Like getting yeah. as like getting as much pussy as possible <laughs> and being a warrior for Christ are like <laughs> on the opposite. They they, they cancel yeah, each other out. But it's but it's such a common trajectory. And you know, part of it I think is just people get older, right? Um, but I think another part of it is I guess it it it, it it revolves around this understanding of a natural hierarchy. Because essentially in order for you to say Two things have to be true in this mindset. One is that men are naturally dominant over women um, and women are happy being kind of passive, submissive kind of um, ho housewives. And this is the way that it is, history has always, always been as well uh, in their understanding. Um, this isn't a kind of anachronistic post-war thing. This is just how history has always been. Um, but also something happened. The women went crazy. You know, in the 1960s, suddenly they all burned their bras and decided they wanted to go and work in an office. And so how does that happen? You know, how do women become dominant over men if this is the natural eternal hierarchy? And it's a kind of answer that just needs a conspiracy theory. Do you know, someone yeah, needs absolutely. to have told the women to do that. Um, someone needs to have influenced them. 
And obviously, you know, if you're a if you're a budding neo-Nazi hanging out on these forums, you've got a really easy answer for who told them to do that. But it doesn't have to, you know, necessarily be so explicit. But it eventually, you know, will always result in this understanding that there is this sinister kind of cabal essentially running things that have upended um, and subverted this natural hierarchy. And so I think, you know, this is bound to lead most of the people who kind of think very deeply about these kinds of problems, these kinds of questions, um, into a, I guess you could call it paranoid. I don't really like that word, but yeah, I guess a kind of um, an anxiety, a fear surrounding modernity itself, I guess, um, and this kind of retreat essentially to a kind of spiritual life, a religious life separate from society. Well, I guess that's like, uh, you know, the crossover between, you know, pickup artistry and a kind of uh, right wing political ideology. Because like, you know, say what you want about like, you know, mystery and like negging women or whatever. At the end of the day, what they told you if you were a guy struggling to get a date or attract women is that it is your own fault. And that if you like, but but like there is a solution to it and here are some practical things that you can do, like yeah. strategies that you can pursue that will lead to better outcomes in your dating and social life. Um, you know, you can you can quibble with the details of it, but like, you know, the 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 uh, the essential observation was like not wrong. But then again, like but like the the, trend, the 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 shift now is that they're saying, yeah, like it is your fault because you're weak and you know you you don't tan your balls, you don't deadlift, you know, you eat seed oils and shit like that. But then also like there's there's nothing you can do about it other than harden yourself to the entire world. You know, like not open yourself up to love mm. and possibility, but in fact to like you know shear off all influences that could potentially weaken you because, you know, essentially there's no escape. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, I think neither of those approaches are like particularly desirable, do you know? I don't really like, I guess, the response. There's a kind of backlash, I suppose, to, um, I guess, discourse around incel where people will kind of say, we'll, we'll pretend people on the liberal left will just suddenly pretend they're like, what? These guys can't get a girlfriend. It's so easy. Dating's so easy. There must be something yeah. wrong with them. Do you know? And I don't like that either because, I mean, in every it's other scenario, easy. in every situation, we admit that dating is hard, except suddenly when it comes to, to this one. It seems silly. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, no matter how enlightened a a anyone is, a lot of people do just default into thinking it's just this thing that women reward cool men with. Yeah. <laughs> Women don't really enjoy it. It's just a reward yeah. <laughs> for the coolest guys. I've been depressed for the past several days. I've been teaching workshops. I've been building businesses and watching children and doing all the shit that I have to do and never letting out all the sexual synergy and hunger and anger and frustration and yelling and eating and breathing. Attend me. Ah, 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 ah. I don't want to fuck my wife because I'm sucking the sexual energy in. I don't want to train. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to fucking do anything because it's become a neurotic holding pattern. Because depression is a holding pattern. You're holding yourself depressed. I'm holding it in. I'm holding in the energy. You've got to express.